in this episode of Travelog. I'm on the hunt for one of China's greatest mysteries, the lost civilization of Sanxing Hui. Big words I know, but hear me out. In order to uncover the past, I'm heading to the present-day capital of Sichuan province, Chengdu, and the nearby city of Guanghan, where our story begins. Nurtured by the fertile Chengdu plains, for millennia this area has been a center of human activity. But it wasn't until recently that archaeologists discovered something incredible here. The remains of a hitherto unknown civilization. Every story has a humble beginning, and ours takes us back to 1929, when a farmer digging a ditch stumbled upon a remarkable cache of jade and stone artifacts. Experts would identify the site as belonging to a city more than 3,000 years old, Sanxingdui. Today, only a hillock marks the site, where in 1986, archaeologists made another startling discovery. Inside two sacrificial pits, they found a treasure trove of jade, bronze and gold. They were particularly struck by dozens of cast bronze faces, some the size of a small car. They'd been made with a complexity and style never before seen in China. They'd found the Bronze Age city of Sanxingdui. When they excavated the sacrificial pits, they found that many of the items inside had been deliberately burnt, some beyond recognition, which begs the question, why? Oh, I'm actually kind of nervous. Oh my God. Beneath my feet lay riddles that challenged our understanding of the Bronze Age in China. Buried here were artifacts that were more refined than anything previously found anywhere in the country. But where did the Sanxingdui people get the resources and the know-how to create them? Whose were the bronze faces? And why did they look so alien? To solve this mystery would be to redefine the origin of Chinese civilization. North of the excavation site is the museum where I begin my quest proper. There we are, my key to unlocking all the mysteries here. The oldest archaeological finds in China date from the Shang Dynasty, which came to power in the second millennium BC, centered on the Yellow River Valley a thousand kilometers northeast of here. Experts were astonished to discover that another civilization had been flourishing at roughly the same time in this remote part of the country. Welcome to one of China's greatest mysteries, Sanxingdui. Displayed inside the museum's two exhibition halls, are complete collections of the relics unearthed at Sanxingdui. They reveal a previously unknown world, filled with seemingly strange beliefs and stranger people.
close to a thousand bronzes have been found at Sensingui. Most, it appears, were used in rituals. Yet before the discovery of Sensingui, the only Bronze Age sites in the world that had ever yielded such life-sized bronze statues, masks, and heads were found in Greece and Egypt. This was a first for China. So who were these enigmatic people? And where did they come from? Wow, look at you. Wow. Most say it's the eyes that draw you in. Those long, snail-like windows to the soul of this lost civilization. What a mysterious face. You know, this was the largest bronze mask of its time. And its face is full of mysteries, full of secrets. How did they make it? Where is this mask from? Who made this mask? And perhaps most important of all, why did they make it? There are a lot of theories and nobody knows for sure, but some experts say that this mask was cast in the likeness of one of the legendary kings of Sensingui, a semi-mythical figure called Tantong. He supposedly had protruding, bulging eyes, but here the eyes are exaggerated. They come out, they jut out of the face, as if to say, I can see everything. And the ears, they grow out from the side of the head, as if to say, I can hear everything. I am the almighty god of Sansindui. Much of China's most ancient history is grounded in myth. But at Sensingdui, some facts have been identified behind the fable. We know now that it was the capital of the Kingdom of Shu, a southern rival to the powerful Shang Dynasty in the north. It was a time when Stonehenge was going up in Britain, when the alphabet was still in its infancy. A time coinciding with Homer's Troy, once thought legend, now confirmed as true. Coming up next, we explore the theme of power and the intimate link it formed between sensing doing and the sun. These are not typical of Bronze Age China. The much bigger, supposedly more powerful Shang Dynasty rarely made masks, and when they did it was just for decoration. These are the products of belief, symbols of power. Who are you? Primal and benevolent with eyes that penetrate. When they discovered Sanzingui, they found close to 60 of these incredible bronze heads. They're over 3,000 years old, and yet they're so intricately cast. But I think probably the most striking feature of these heads are the eyes and the noses. They look neither Chinese, nor do they look Western. Some people even say they look alien but probably the most impressive of these bronze heads were the ones that they found covered in gold leaf. For the Egyptians, gold was the color of the gods, the embodiment of the sun. The Greeks thought it indestructible and immutable for gold was a rare resource, and only the most important relics were gilded. Though these heads look similar, there are subtle differences. 
a headband here, pierced earlobes there. Perhaps they represented the ethnic groups that made up Sanxingdui society. One thing, however, is safe to assume. These heads represented people in the highest echelons of the ruling elite. Experts believe that these heads represented the shamans who held positions of authority in sensing those theocratic society. But interestingly, six of them were found with gold leaf plastered over the face. The thing is, China doesn't really use gold. During that time, ancient Egypt used gold, ancient Greece used gold. But so far to this day, these are the only gilded bronze masks to be found in China. Wow! Now this was an important person. Especially standing down here, looking up at him, which is how he would have been intended to have been seen. Back when he was made, he was the tallest bronze statue of a human. And in his oversized hands, some have said he would have held a ritual vessel, perhaps an elephant's tusk, which means he would have been incredibly important. Perhaps he was actually the shaman and leader of Sanxingdui, and this statue is a testament to his power. great leader of Shu, a shaman king who could communicate with the gods. Indeed, this was not an uncommon concept. For more than 2,000 years, the emperors of China believed they were the sons of heaven, as did the god kings of Egypt. But who were his gods? in a really big car <laughs> but what we do know is that this is a bronze sun wheel and during the time of Sanxing Dui sun worship was prevalent across the world because it was at a time when agriculture was becoming the main form of survival for many people and here in Sanxing Dui the sun motif can be found on relics such as the bronze birds the shamans and headdresses and the message is clear humans working together with nature During the Bronze Age, the sun became the most important deity, a symbol of life and fertility, worshipped by all the great civilizations. At Sanxingdui, intricate bronze altars have been found along with kneeling human figures. These probably represent shamans or high-ranking ministers and would have featured in the most important rituals. Their posture suggests they were giving offerings to the gods or perhaps they themselves were the offerings. Well, that's actually a pretty faithful rendition of one of the relics dug up at Sanxingdui. Obviously this one's significantly bigger than the original, but it gives us a good idea of the atmosphere and the majesty of the rituals that could have taken place at Sanxingdui. Many ritual weapons were uncovered from the sacrificial pits, but no human remains were found, only the charred bones of pigs, sheep and oxen. Interestingly, some of the masks were found with traces of cinnabar and black pigment on them. Did this suggest they were bringing them to life? <laughs> Interesting. Well, I wonder 
what uh, actual rituals were like back in the days of Sen Tingde. But this is a pretty good representation, I think. You always wonder what uh, their rituals would have looked like. What these uh, shamans, I guess, would have looked like with their masks on. <笑>你好 <笑>对对 Coming up next, I explore the ingenuity of Sanxingdui's craftsmen and wonder if they had any help from the outside. We now know that Sanxingdui was once the biggest city in southern China. It was even bigger in scale than Babylon, the most populous city in the world at the time. It was a seat of power rivaling that of the Shang Dynasty's own capital in the Yellow River Valley. This was the political, commercial and spiritual hub of the Kingdom of Shu. Yueliangwan was the northern district of Sanxingdui city. 然后这一面就是月亮湾城墙文化城非常丰富它也是整个三星堆古城的核心区域之一这个就是城墙了你看它现在高出这个台地它这个就是人工从下面一层一层夯起来的哦不是自然形成的这一整块都是城墙这个是
circular discs to weapons shaped like daggers and blades for sacrificing to the heavens, to the mountains, and to the earth. The ancients believed jade was the universe condensed. The discovery of so much jade, close to a thousand pieces, suggests Sanxingdu was just as sophisticated as the Shang Dynasty. Sanxingdu 通道,就是說連接印度洋和古蘇國,連接成都平原的一條商道,這條道路也就是我們今天學界所說的南方四十字路. A link between Sanxingdu and the West, what a tantalizing thought. Can you guess what this is? This was the ultimate symbol of power a gold staff. Nothing like it had ever been seen before. It would have shone like the sun. The detail is so exquisite, it's thought it could only be reproduced today using laser etching. Some people say this staff had more to do with Near East civilizations, like Mesopotamia and Egypt, than China. So, was there a connection? When experts first found this, they had no idea what it was. They thought it was a gold belt, because in China, the traditional symbol of authority has always been a bronze vessel called a ding. Staves were things of the West. To find such a staff in China was a complete anomaly. How they were able to learn such advanced craftsmanship is likely to forever remain a mystery. What a masterpiece! This is the magnum opus of Sanxingdui. A divine tree at the center of their world. On its branches, Nine birds, symbols of the sun. When this was first found, it was shattered into many pieces, and it took archaeologists an inordinate amount of time to put back the pieces of this puzzle. And when they did, they were able to rebuild this, the world's oldest and tallest bronze tree. It was sensing to his very own stairway to heaven. It was the Tower of Babel. The birds and the tree, they were mediums to communicate with the very gods themselves. And the craftsmanship was so exquisite that today, standing here, I still feel the same kind of awe, respect and solemnity as I would have felt 3,000 years ago. Almost every ancient civilization in history had a sacred tree. For some, it represented life, while for others, it was their very world. A Han Dynasty text, some 2,000 years old, refers to a legendary tree on which sat ten birds. Each day, one would fly into the sky and become the sun. When Sanxingdui's tree was finally put together, the top was missing. Was there once a tenth bird? Whatever their original intention, the meaning is clear. Statues of human legs with avian feet. Man merging with nature. The 
story of Sanxingdui is the story of southern China. Theirs was a tale of harmony and coexistence, the desire to become one with the gods. So, perhaps Sanxingdui wasn't so alien after all. In fact, its people may have been quintessentially Chinese, their ideals going on to shape later beliefs like Taoism and the open-minded, cooperative mentality of southern China. Today, the name Shu still lives on as an abbreviated form of Sichuan province. You know, I've had a thought that maybe it's not the religion, but the land that influenced the way Sensing Dui people work with nature, and perhaps continues to influence the lifestyles of Sichuanese people today. All right, brother, take you home. funny sometimes, isn't it? That some of the world's greatest archaeological discoveries were simply down to serendipity. Nobody could expect that so many years ago, a farmer digging his own irrigation system would uncover a lost civilization that would change the face of Chinese history forever. And it was simply down to a bronze mask.